But right now, we'll do a little q and I'll answer all your questions the best of my abilities, and we'll go from there. Also, we're going to have a meetup in Puerto Rico, I think, at the Smokehouse. I got to see when Steven's, Steven the, is the owner when he's back in town. So we'll do that hopefully this week, and uh, we'll drink our sorrows away, and we'll eat too much, and we'll talk, and should be good times. And I'll let you know when that happens. Probably Wednesday or Thursday, maybe Friday, who knows. But Q&A time. Uh, ask all your questions now and we'll go from there. If you got to take off, take off. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you. Good times. All right. This is my favorite part of the, of the show. Ooh, Hector. Buenas noches, hermanos. Good evening, brothers. Uh, <laughs> Toby says I'm trying to learn. We're all trying to learn. Let's see. Hola, Hector. ¿Cómo estás? Todo está bien. Let's see. Ah, I don't know if that's true, but it could be. Mike says, Sam Bacon was a Sith Lord trained by Soros. I don't know what's going on. I just, I've just been in this game long enough, and I think we have all lived through the Celsius Voyager debacle, so we kind of know the, what time it is. So if you're stumbling along this video, congratulations. Hopefully you won't get rug pulled. And uh, now's your opportunity to take things off of crypto, off of the exchange. <laughs> My kids are going to college, so I'm going all on 100x leverage. I'll be honest with you. Sometimes uh, college is overrated. I mean, if you're going to go there for, you know, electrical engineering and doctors and lawyers, sure, I got you. But some of these, some of these degrees, I'm like, did you really need to go to college for that? Just saying, that's just me. All right. Jarky is awesome. Sharky, if you're here, I'll take a lifeline where it didn't happen. Oh, no. Uh, I know folks started to panic about uh, Crimbo, selling off their crypto to heavy loss for, for pennies on the dollars for the kids in a monster turkey. I don't know. Yeah, it happens a lot. Ah, thank you, Vicky. Sentiment link. There's the, uh, I think I linked that in the description as well about the, uh, the Ethereum issue, 47%. Uh, those two nodes are processing 47% of all the blocks, which is kind of crazy. Ah, Jarky did it again. Thank you, Jarky, for giving everybody uh, memberships. We all appreciate it. So everybody thank Jarky in the comments, if you would. Great, 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 great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Staking aid with Dan is the only thing to do these days. The rest is just noise. Uh, this is, to me, like the bear market is kind of like Squid Game. It's just like, just to see how much how much you can take uh, to see the, your portfolio dip and dodge and dive and, and uh, just go down uh, across for years and just see if you can take it to get the other side. I mean, if you've been here since 20... 2011, 12, you know what I'm talking about. Or even 2016, 17, you know what I'm talking about. It just takes time. And then uh, as time goes on, you're just like, wow, well, glad I did what I did. <laughs> Robin says, Ben is 800K subscriber, James Fornavicki. When are you going to get more? I don't need more. I'm very happy with where I'm at right now. I like the people that come here. Uh, I don't have a lot of tourists. I get people who understand the process. And uh, I appreciate everybody. Uh, we're just here to support each other just to get to the next uh, next stage. So if I get some more, I get some more. What will happen is the, the bull run will come up and I'll get a bunch of more subscribers and they'll suck. They'll, and I'm going to tell you why. Because once I get new subscribers in, I've, a boatload of them in the bear market or the bull market, then they start telling me that I don't know what I'm talking about because I'm a boomer. Hint, I'm not. And uh, everything's going to go to the moon. And now there's all these, whatever, this time is different. And I'm going to, I got to sit here. I'm like, okay, bite my tongue. And I'm like, wait, just wait to the bear market. And then here we are again. So I'm happy right now with you guys. Very happy. Oh, <laughs> Jerky says, never pay taxes, boys. Move to Monaco. Stop to help the capitalism keep robbing you. That's a good point. You go to Abu Dhabi. That seems like be the new hot place. Coming to Puerto Rico. We could use some people over here. We could definitely use, especially when you move here and the uh, different charities that you have to to give to, one of those being Pro Techos, we need that here badly. So we will welcome you with open arms. 
Also, there's a big boom here for solar panels and solar construction. Just saying, if you're into that, this is your next big place. <laughs> Good Lord, that's funny. Uh, thank you, Bicky. Uh, disclaimer, not financial or legal or tax advice. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. Just an opinion. Dan is not an expert, obviously. Or a financial planner, perform your own research. Thank you, Bicky. On top of it as usual. Yeah, David says, I like Yusko. He's honest, I think. Yeah, he seems like a pretty good guy. And again, I was just, I made a mistake yesterday. I thought he was talking about 2023 like uh, uh, Draper was talking about. 250K in the middle of next year, do you think that's going to happen to Bitcoin? I don't think it's going to happen. I could be wrong. But uh, Yusko's like, he's like, yeah, we can see 200K in 2024, 2025. I'm like, yeah, that does make sense. So, uh, I don't know who this is. Have you heard about Nikolai Mashijian over there? No, but I did hear about the MakerDAO CEO uh, drowned here in Puerto Rico. So that was awful. Mm, let's see. So Hein says, if FTX has financial problems, perhaps vote no on their buyer proposal. It's a good thought. But here's the thing. I'm still going to, I'm going to vote yes because I want out of this situation with, with Voyager. I know people are like, I'm going to vote no. And you can, you know, it's fine. But I just want to move forward and, and uh, get 72% back of all my crypto, the value that it is, and over the 20 days that they're going to say it is, and just move forward. I think right now is a great time to buy crypto. Could it go lower? Yes. Could it take off? Yeah, maybe. But, or could it just be flat for the next uh, year or two? Yeah, possibly. But I think right now, just just uh, investing and just taking it slow and not investing more you can afford to lose, not keeping things on the exchange and just waiting it out, I think is is my best option. Maybe not for you. Uh, this is great. Uncle Rob, what's your best trade if you want to build wealth in your opinion? Just be patient. And uh, it's just like the army. Like I, I, if, if Neville's here or anybody's in the military, you know what I'm talking about. All you got to do is show up with, with the right uniform and you get promoted. That's pretty much what it is. That's the secret. And it's a very boring secret. So like, as far as building wealth, first of all, like to me, I look at like, what's the, what's the risk versus reward ratio here? Like I can put my money into bonds and get a whopping 4%, which is true. And it's very, very safe. Or I could dabble into equities or I could put a good amount into uh, real estate or I could uh, do uh, a decent rough amount uh, into, into crypto. And I do all those things, uh, except for the, the, the treasury bills. I don't do that. So like in this situation, I just say like, wait it out. And then you have to understand is that um, I didn't make all of my crypto gains in Bitcoin. I know, shocker, right? So I know people, especially the Bitcoin max will say, Bitcoin is the only way. Right now in the bear market, there's a lot of Bitcoin maxis being being minted. That is for sure. But for me, in 20, after I got out of 2018, the nonsense that was 2018 and 19 and 20, I put a lot of funds into altcoins. And that was a, a bigger payoff. It's very risky. And like I, I mean, I put, I put a lot into Luna. Remember Luna? Yeah, that one. And uh, thankfully, I followed my own advice. I took profits along the way, rolled that, those profits into, well, this house actually. And then some other condos here in, in Puerto Rico. And it worked out great. But then as soon as I got done with that, I started to dollar cost average again into uh, Luna. Lost it all. Yeah, lost all that. So again, it's very risky. And uh, that's that's what I'm going to tell you. Like, take it slow. Realize the risk versus reward. Understand that uh, there's sometimes a basket you might want to look into. And unfortunately, I, I said it like it's financial advice. It's not. It's just the truth. You know, but you have to decide what is your risk tolerance. I don't know your situation. Yeah, fair. Huge thanks to Digital Last News. Well, it wasn't just me. It was like everybody. But thank you. I appreciate that. It was quite scary getting some Bitcoin out there. It took eight hours. That's a long time. Def definitely will be more careful in the future. You know what's even scarier? Uh, when I did that video on Celsius, June 12th, I think it was, I put in an order to take off because I had four Bitcoin on there. And I said, okay, I'm, I did a test transaction like I was talking about. And then the next one, and that came through. And then I put an order in for three and a half Bitcoin to be taken off and it never came through. Never. So I've got around four, 
something Bitcoin stuck on there. I have six figures on there, actually. <laughs> no, no, let me put it, maybe Rob, let me clean this pool. I got a guy who does that. He's awesome. Yeah. Kata Coder says, Rob, the day of the SPF and Eric was excellent. Eric truly wants essentialized financial independence for anyone. SPF wants to make a profit. That's it. I, I, uh, I watched it. It was interesting. And that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, I have to tell you guys, I like profits too. I think, I think most of us do. But I do want to see us get away from the old version of the things that we've done so far. Because I think in the next evolution, it's, we're going to need a lot of decentralization. And there's a, a great video we, we, we took a look at. It was a, a Congress hearing. I forgot the guy's name, but he was talking about, about why we need decentralization and Bitcoin in general. And it's the very first video I have over on danteachescrypto.com. And really just comes down to, I mean, everything is centralized. Look at all the things you have to give up for having centralization. First of all, we know the banks aren't the greatest, right? It's, if you're in America, it's not so bad. But to move money around the world, first of all, you're always a middleman. You got to be, you know, someone has to be there. Someone has to approve it. And it can't be so much. And there's fees involved with that, which there's fees with everything. But it's kind of exorbitant as, as you start to move a little more money around. And then also, how many times have, has, has your personal data been hacked or been leaked or something like that. And that's all because of centralization. Everything's stuck on the cloud, stuck in Google. It's stuck on all these different companies. And uh, when we have decentralization, it's very hard to hack all those different things. I, I say that with a grain of salt because look at pretty much a ton of the DeFi projects, like it's not that hard. So these are the things, there's pros and cons to everything, but yeah, Kadek, I got to agree with you on that one. Although I, I do think... Sam, Sam's getting a bad rap right now. Let's 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 take it back a, a second. We just talked about it, right? But we can't throw him under the bus all the way. You know, he does have this this ideal to give away all of his wealth, and he does talk a lot about helping out uh, the little man and and the and the person out there. I know I should learn my lesson after Mashinsky came and lied to all our all of us on our faces, but I am a. Uh, I know. This is going to be hard to believe, but I am an eternal optimist. And I think in the long run, things work out. So I don't know. I think I think right now FTX is going to go through some problems. And all I can tell you is to uh, don't be there when, you know, the last song is played, we'll say. All right. <laughs> Rob, I heard you said before you were stationed at Fort Leonard Wood. Curious if you ever hit Big Louie's. Never hit Big Louie's. That was basic, basic training. Worst plays ever. Uh, let's see. Dot has good news. Yeah, Dot has some good news. I don't know what it is, but you can share it with me. So Polka Dot. Last thing I heard was uh, Dr. Gavin Wood stepped down, which I thought was a great play as the CEO and started to move into uh, moving Polka Dot forward, what he's best at. So yes. Uh, SPF is next. Voldemort. Oh, okay. I think Solana will go more down because of FTX foot. You know, it's interesting. What's the what's the price of Solana? I saw that they had, took a huge hit. That was after some really good news. One of those is that uh, Solana was was picked up by Google to help them with uh, cloud service, and they were going to be running nodes. And on top of the fact that they partnered up with uh, Facebook or Meta for the Instagram uh, NFT uh, minting and selling. Let's see. Solana. Oof. Well, it's not like it's that bad. It's down 6%. But Polygon, baby. Ah, yes. I own both of these. I own Solana and Polygon. So that's... It's called diversification. It works out pretty well. So do I think Solana will go more down because of FTX foot? Well, I mean... That's uh, Sam's big play. Do I think it will? Eh, I could. Not entirely for sure. I will tell you this. Uh, I don't know which way it's going to go, but it's good for me. Like as it goes down, uh, usually my my DCA uh, plays trigger in the morning. So tomorrow morning, I should probably have a pretty good deal. <laughs> or I was on a K wrenches. Uh, let's see. I'm 
missed Boomer by one year. And I think that's it. Hold on. Ah, here we go. Jay and Chow always answer the, the, uh, the good questions. What do you think of Alameda Research being the next triple three arrows capital since they acquired Voyager with probable insolvent assets? And what Jay and Chow is talking about is the insolvent assets being a couple of things. One of those is the FTX token, FTT. The other one is that they have it locked up. Also on top of that, they have uh, almost a billion dollars locked up uh, for Solana. So, man, I hope that's not the case. I hope uh, Sam is, you know, weathering that storm. He can, he can actually push things out. But I got to tell you, over the last year or so, I mean, since June, it seems like everything that's uh, the worst case scenario seems to, not the worst case, but if it's going to be bad, it's going to happen. And uh, if, if FTX becomes insolvent, you can kiss that Voyager deal goodbye. That's just how it is. So can we do another death spiral? I don't know. But I will tell you this. If if FTX goes down, that will hit repercussions throughout the entire crypto ecosystem. And we'll start to see, I mean, projects just go down left and right, not through any fault of their own. I mean, you just saw like Ethereum's doing great things. They're building. I mean, Solana got, got picked up. Polygon is uh, everywhere. I mean, Cardano is doing their Cardano things. But uh, it'll drop everything. And maybe even Gareth Soloway will say, Gareth Soloway says, yeah, he goes, I think we're going to see a Bitcoin 3K, which is worst case scenario. You could potentially see that if FTX goes down. Correct me where I'm wrong here. But if that's just, that would be the third centralized, essentially, exchange. I know, I know Celsius Wesley wasn't, but that'd be the third one in under a year. And that's a huge one. Do you want to know how big they are? Let me show you something on Nomics. There's a website. It's called nomics.com forward slash exchanges. And let's see. Let me get out of here. And as you can see, let's take a look at the volume. So we can sort it by volume in the last 24 hours. Binance is always on top. 64.68 billion. Okay, pretty good. OKX, 12.48 billion. And FTX is $11.4 billion in the last 24 hours. And they're always in the top five. Always. And that's just, just the volume itself. So again, can you, if, if you want to, if you think that, no, nah, it won't be that big of a deal, it'll be a big, it'll be a big deal. However, did Bitcoin get hacked? Was there a double spend? Did Vladimir Putin come out and say, I, cr I created Ethereum or I created Bitcoin? Was there any enormous hack on a layer one? No. It really just comes down to the centralized exchanges. And I got to tell you, after, the, after Celsius and Voyager, the one thing that really did well I, mean, I know there's been hacks on different DeFi protocols, but at least those, at least they held their end of the bargain for the majority of uh, different things. So just remember this. There's a difference between us hitting just this, this huge slide because of maybe greed, arrogance, and hubris from the, the powers that be up above and in certain exchanges, as opposed to what the actual products are doing. And I need you to make sure that you understand the valuation of, of what's happening and where things are going. Remember, there's a reason why uh, BlackRock with its, I don't even know how much, trillions of assets under management, six trillion assets under management. There's a reason why Fidelity with uh, 3.4 trillion assets under management is here and getting into crypto and actually offering retail free trading for Bitcoin and Ethereum. There's a reason why Mass Mutual is doing the same as dipping into uh, crypto. There's a reason why uh, one of the oldest banks in, in the US, BNY Mellon, is also offering crypto to its customers. There's a reason for all these things. There's a reason that President Biden commissioned a task force to understand crypto and digital assets, how it's going to affect the United States. A whole commission on it a whole team because I know it's going to be the future. So just be aware that if things fall apart because of an, an exchange, it's not because of the, uh, the, pr the projects, a lot of projects suck, but, uh, some will do well. And that's why I spread things around, go from there. 
Yeah. Mandatory, <laughs> mandatory myocarditis. That's funny. Thank God for DEX. His government wants to regulate them out of existence, but uh, good luck with that. Yeah, it's very tough. However, you can't regulate the DEXs, but you can regulate uh, certain wallets, especially hot wallets. And you can also regulate the on-ramps. So remember that. Although, I was thinking about this. You know, we're just the post office uh, here in Guaynabo, and I saw uh, a sign for uh, Bitcoin uh, ATM. So, like, I mean, the prices are ridiculous, and it's, it's kind of overinflated for the price to actually use a Bitcoin ATM. But once you do that, and you have your Bitcoin, and they send it to your wallet, right? You can do whatever you want to in, in that regard, and no one's going to do that. Now, there is a, a limit to how much you can actually buy at those ATMs. After that, I think they'd have to go to like KYC product. Correct me in the comments, but I'm pretty sure it is. But if you do it slow enough, crossway, no one will ever know you were there. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, okay. So Mentor says SPF wants DEX to be relevant. He did initially, but then when he had the, the debate with Voorhees and he took a, look, a step back, he's like, and you can read his tweets. He came back and said, maybe that was incorrect. Maybe that's not a good idea for Dex to be related. Now, he may have gone back again and flip flop. I'm not for sure. But, I mean, good luck. Good luck with regulating uh, Dex is for sure. Wallets, you know, okay. But that's what the free market's for. Create a wallet that use wherever you want to. Ah, that's a good point. I never thought of this. Ingeri says, I think the failure of FTX would solidify Coinbase and Binance to the top two for a long time, like Apple and Microsoft. It's a good point. Actually, I use Coinbase right now. Coinbase has this, uh, this promo where you can, it's called uh, Coinbase One, I think it is. You pay like, uh, I think it's like 15 bucks a month or 10 bucks a month, one of those two. And there's no uh, fees. There's no trading fees or no buying fees or anything like that, up to $10,000. So, that's why I get away with dollar cross averaging every day. I just pay the 15 bucks. I'm pretty sure it's 15 bucks. And then everything that all the, all the, uh, all the charges, they get wiped away with that, with that free service. And you can sign up for that on Coinbase. I don't have a, a link, so sorry, but you'll find it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Talking about Ben and James in a fist fight. It's funny. But with the Google partnership, Solana has some some hard long term game. Yeah, it's very true. And Jaden says it correctly. Uh, the death spiral is going to screw up everything. It is. But again, the products are still good. And that's see, this is the beauty of this is the beauty of of dollar cost averaging as opposed to like going all in. You can do you can go all in. My friend Diddy from uh, the Bitcoin family, he did that in 2017 early. Worked out great for him, right? Because he got in Bitcoin at $1,000. These days, a little bit more difficult, right? It's hard to, hard to say that. But if you went all in, let's say when Bitcoin was 30000 you probably felt like a genius. You're like, ah, oh, well, it went up to you know, 67000 Awesome. If you would have sold, great. But a lot of you didn't because you know we get greedy. And that's why you watch these channels. So you can figure out exactly what's a good time to you know, take profits. I can't tell you when, but I have a video on it. Anyhow, so I just think that uh, when you DCA, like right now, like I don't have a worry in the world because I'm like, okay, well, it could go down, the price go down, but I didn't dump a bunch of it because I'm actually dollar cost averaging less because I don't think we've hit a bottom yet. I just didn't. So I'm dollar cost averaging less until like we go down and then I start to what's called dynamic DCA. As we drop, 20%, I add 20% to my daily and weekly allocation. If it goes down by 50%, you, you get, this, you get the, the drift. And we go from there. Yeah, Chris says, why would Binance want FTX to collapse and do massive damage to the whole ecosystem? That will damage Binance and put the market back for years. I will tell you one thing, though. It would put them back, but sometimes... Well, if you want to, if you want to be 
Machiavellian and just say, well, this is just a person or individual or a group who says, well, that's actually good because now we have less competition. Peter Thiel even says it. He goes, uh, what did he say? He said, uh, competition is for losers. He goes, go into an industry where there's no competition. Why would you want to go where there's a bunch of competition? And right now there's a lot of exchanges out there. So if it does collapse, I'm not saying it wouldn't be bad for Binance. It'd probably be pretty good in the long run. Just saying. It's a good point. Scary though, but yeah, probably so. Uh, Tony Big. Coinbase Pro accounts are being converted to Coinbase accounts. Thank you. I haven't seen Tony in a while. Tony's one of my old OGs from back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Zenos is like, I got to join a work meeting at one minute. Zenos, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be watching and at work. But if you're quiet quitting, that's up to you. Thank you, Tuesday's Rag and Fire, for the $2 super sticker. I will uh, be able to buy a lot of, a lot of uh, Luna Classic with that. A lot of Luna Classic. <laughs> yeah, so... Jerry Chess, I heard in Coinbase one is a ripoff version of Coinbase Pro. The spread is terrible for trading, and you will buy it at a premium price. I heard you don't really buy it at a premium price. I took a look at the different different spreads. Coinbase Pro, yes, you do get a better rate just using Coinbase Pro. However, I'm lazy, and I like to just set it and forget it as far as just for my my dollar cost averaging every day. So I just set it up, and uh, that's it. And I pay a little bit of fees, and I'm okay. If I if I have to pay an extra 20 cents, so much the better. You know, I'm not paying $50 extra or something crazy like that. But you're right. Uh, Coinbase Pro has the better spreads. Mm, let's see. I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, you might not like BlackRock, but they trust Coinbase to their billions. My bet is they did their due diligence. Same thing with MicroStrategy. So Coinbase Custody uh, is doing that for them. Well, that's interesting. I'm going to take a look at that. There's a Bitcoin ATM that requires no personal info, 3,000 USD per SIM card. It's unlimited. Just need a cell phone and a bag of SIM cards. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe not. God, I got to tell you. I, I think that's it, guys, uh, for the questions, but thank you. Um, I don't think we could handle another Luna or a Celsius here. That'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. That'd be tough. And uh, that would really cement who could really take it. Because I got to tell you, this has been like 2018 and 19. They were pretty tough years, you know, but we didn't have, I mean, we had Mount Gox in 2014 get hacked and everybody lost their Bitcoin so far. But, um, you know, we didn't have essentially like a Voyager or a Celsius just collapsing. And uh, taking everybody's money. That was a, a big blow. And then Luna, of course, it all started with Luna. We knew Luna. I mean, projects come and go, right? But uh, absolute collapse. I guess the, the next biggest one would be uh, BitConnect. But that was just a straight up Ponzi. But I got to tell you, this, was been, this has been so far one of the worst and toughest years to take. Again, when in doubt, zoom out. And just think to yourself, well, you know, if I'm here for you know, a little bit of time, and I don't spend uh, way too much, and I can't. I can. Aff I don't have to afford what I can't lose. It should be okay. It just takes again boring time. That's what it comes down to, and that's it. So look, everybody, that's it for today. We're coming up on 50 minutes. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you guys. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I think we talk about are very time sensitive, especially things that are going on right now. But that's it. I'll let everybody know about the uh, Puerto Rico meetup. We'll do all that uh, hopefully this week. And that's all I got. So thanks so much. I appreciate you guys. And I'll see you on the next one. Adios.